Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode we got this sort of basic bootstrap bus set up, which is where we've just got a load of machines piled in on top of each other, um, producing the basics of what the base needs. Uh, so I'm now trying to expand. I'm also having some issues with the um, Far Reach mod. For some reason, at the end of my last uh, last episode, it, it stopped working. So I'm now just turning the mod off and turning it back on again. Give it a shot, see if that fixes it. I think it should. There we go, much better. So I've got the basic machine set up. I've got a small, I've got a, a, um, a belt pulling the iron away from the furnaces. And although I am still using um, burner everything and hand inserting all of, a lot of the, um, well, certainly all of the coal and some of the other things as well. I also went off to attack those biters, as you might remember, and that didn't go so well. <laughs> um, so AAI has put in this extra sort of t almost tier of burner level. It's not quite up to the stage of the um, oh, what's that mod called? The one where the um, the developer decided he didn't like streamers and then pulled it pulled it offline. Um, oh yeah, Industrial Revolution. Um, that had a full tier that you're supposed to spend ages in of um, burn level everything and so you'd probably have every belt would have coal on one side of it just to keep everything running this isn't quite to that extent uh, but it does but um, at the moment there is quite a lot of burner stuff around it's a, it's, a, it's a starting point should we say so I'm using all, all these all these oops, some attack I'm using all of these um, burner assembly machines in order to just just to get things started and it's also very iron heavy, but then the, the early part of a Factorio run through is always very iron heavy. The other thing that AAI adds in is these um, motors, so we need to add in for the um, for almost everything. So, so it's, it's an extra step. So in, in vanilla Factorio, you basically just need cogs and then iron to build most things, and then maybe copper. Whereas this one, you, you also have to build up the motors and then sometimes electric motors as well. So it adds a little bit more to the um, to the build process and, and a little bit more complexity. So one of the things I was wondering about is whether I should have a big central factory somewhere that's just producing enormous quantities of these motors or whether I'm okay, whether it'd be better off just producing them on site for each each individual build so here we've got them being produced for um, I've got one one assembly machine producing them for all the belt stuff I'd have another one for all of the drill stuff another one for all of the assemblers and so on rather than just having them all in one place and I think this way well it it, it, it seems to work for now we'll, we'll see how it goes in the um, when I get when I get a bit, bit further on, I may change my mind about this. But at the moment, it's easy enough to just sort of have it all all in line. It might not be the most efficient way because you're probably going to have some machines that aren't running and when they uh, all the time when they could be and so on. But to be honest, I don't think I care at this point. Uh, assembly machines, whilst at this stage of the game, it takes a bit of time to save them up. They're not actually all that expensive. Yeah, I'm not ready to attack that, that base yet. I don't think even with even with the uh, turret I've built. Let's go off and do something a bit safer while we wait for the uh, projectile damage to uh, to to, build, to, um, to finish researching. So it's a bit of oh yeah, one of the other things this mod has is asteroids that will randomly fall from the sky every so often. So you'll get that noise and a little flashing icon, and you can click on it and it'll show you where it's coming down. So far, they've not been there haven't been any that are anywhere near me, so I'm um, I'm not too worried about them. Uh, maybe it's because my factory's still quite small. Right, what should we build next? Inserters, yes, that's a good choice. You need you always need a lot of inserters, so having them built automatically is, is a is a massive time saver because you can just go off and grab a huge pile of them out of a out out of a crate when you need them. And again, so as you see, we've we've got again we've got the um, another little bit creating the uh, creating the the motors and the and the, for this one electric motors as well. That's an extra step up. <laughs> I really need to do something about those biters. Yes, so I'm, as I said, I'm building them off separately from the other ones. So it, 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 uh, it means I don't need to worry about one one set of machines stealing all of the uh, all of the motors. Uh, at the moment, I've just got the problem with the <laughs> with the feed for the um, what do you call it? The feed for the iron not having enough. So let's next step is to um, is to put in a copper feed onto the bus as well. So we we'll do that here. We we'll just stick it in underneath that iron iron belt, and then we can feed that along here. And it'll get passed up into the into the uh, copper wire production machine, and we can start building some some electric motors. Now burner inserters require uh, motors as well. So again, um, rather than building a second machine up at the top or a second pair of machines doing uh, cogs and and, and uh, normal motors up there, instead I'm going to just put in a another belt across there and use the long inserters to pass out, pass them across and pass and, and they can then be sent up to the uh, to the top machine, which will, will grab them off the belt. It's, 
it's a lot easier to do it that way, I think, than to, than to put in the extra machines, especially at this point where um, where my um, the, the building of these assembly machines is running very, very slowly. And there's the faff of running around having to put coal in them all because of all the burner ones. Yes, I am looking forward to getting away from using burner inserters everywhere. <laughs> As usual, yes, just going around filling everything up with coal to make sure it'll keep running. Another biter attack from a different direction. That's a bit of a concern because if they're coming in from elsewhere, then well, I um, yeah, I need to I need to worry even more about defences. As, as we saw then, there's another one off to the southwest and to, and to the northwest. I think I'm probably going to have to attack the southwest ones at some point, although <laughs> not for a while, and and start thinking about walls as well at some point, and and generally thinking about military. Um, it's sort of, it's early on in the game. The biters are a bit more of a bit more of a menace because they they're actually dangerous later on you tend to have walls everywhere so they're just sort of a, a resource sink rather than anything else oh here i'm re redesigning this i thought well i might as well have both of the um the wire assembly machines feeding off the same uh the same same in, uh conveyor belt just because it saves me having to run another one up off the bus and then up here i can um start working out the best way to fit in the uh what's this this is a dr uh, mining drills isn't it I think I'm going to do this the same way. I think I decided eventually that I'd do this basically the same way I did the um, the inserters and have the the, the uh, motors and things being produced at the bottom, then an, a machine to produce the actual product, and then above that the one to produce the earlier versions of it. So that's one of the differences with um, this mod is that you, you, rather than having things like um, burner drills. Oh dear, that's, no, that <laughs> that was a badly done, rather badly done attack. I didn't put the ammunition in the. Um, in the turret quickly enough so the biters came down and did quite a lot of damage to it. Um, it turns out with this mod you also need stone for repair packs for some reason so oh well we'll do that and put the uh, <laughs> put the turret pack together again. Maybe get some more ammunition before I try that again. Yeah so as I was saying um, in this in this mod pack if you want to if you want to build the the electric drills you need burner drills first which in a way is sort of nice because it means when you rip up your old um, burner mining drill facilities you've got something to do with all of the uh, the burner mining drills rather than just sort of sticking them in a box and forgetting about them so it means you've got yeah they don't get wasted and they get you it's you get reused for something later on okay i've got 22 magazines uh 26 magazines i think that'll be enough to go and take on these these biters well i can t i can take out the ones that are running around with the uh, machine gun without too much difficulty there we go now i've loaded the um, turrets up to, to keep the biters off my off me and I can use my own machine gun to take out the um, the nests. However, taking out that nest has basically taken up 20 ra magazines, so I'm going to need to come back down here and get some more ammunition before I can come up and take out the other ones. <laughs> it's a kind of expensive process in ammunition. Uh, so let's build a load more of them, we can go and give it another shot. After trying the shotgun in the last episode, I've decided I don't like it. It Yes, it has a slightly higher damage output, but it's... It just does. It has. The, it seems to have accuracy problems. At least when I'm using it, it does. <laughs> so there we go. Again, I've got the, um, the the turrets taking out the biters and storing ammunition for me. And the spitters, um, worms. Sorry. In theory, you can dodge the stuff they spit if you're sort of reasonably quick. Um, because once it's what now these days, once they've fired it, it doesn't change direction in the air to follow you. It's. A, I'm not very good at dodging though, so I didn't do brilliantly there. I've lost about two thirds of my health. And. And again, with this mod pack, you don't seem to regain health when you're hurt, uh, like in a you know, traditional console shooter. You have to actually go and find a medikit. And that, and that, it turns out, requires fish of all things. So it's time to do a bit of fishing and then build up a medikit from that. Get some more fish. Interestingly, you get five fish each time you go fishing, but it then takes five fish to make each medipack. So it just seems to be a bit of an unnecessary multiplier in there. <laughs> okay, we've got the medikits. Why am I not using them? That would have been sensible. Oh, well. Okay, so here we have um, drills, because that's going to be the next thing I want to make. Uh, we just need to get everything linked up along here. Oh, so yeah, the other thing I've, I've been doing is um, restricting all of my chests to make sure they don't build too much of any of the products. I don't want all of my iron to get swallowed up making thousands and thousands of belts when um, there's other stuff like drills that need to be made. So, in theory, once it gets to the, sort of the 100 or 200 belts, whatever it is I've got it set to, it will then stop taking um, the resource from off the... Uh, off, off the uh, bus and it will then go along and build up other things so it should keep things a bit more balanced 
I'm going to need stone bricks for this as well, which is what the bottom belt is for. Uh, but also we need both of the sort, both of these sort of intermediate products, the bricks, the, sorry, the cogs and the motors for this. So what I'm going to do is have a little windy thing of belts like this, um, and that'll allow me to put the cogs onto the near side of the belt uh, because of the loop thing, and then the motors onto the far side of the belt. So I can have both both of those intermediate products on the same belt without uh, without running into any any problems of trying to have too many things on the, in the same place. Okay, can pull up some of this now because we don't need it anymore. Just get the copper going straight down there, and we'll work. And uh, yeah, also we're trying to get rid of all of the um, things like the assembly machine assembly and get it off this this bootstrap bus. Now I've got a proper one going on, so we'll just pick all of that back up again. The nice thing about this is we can now feed all of the iron straight into the main bus, and it'll get, all get used by the by the machines that we're actually trying to operate, rather than getting um, s s pulled away onto the onto the, the other one. So that should now run a little bit more smoothly. Let's, let's see. The, the iron doesn't really seem to be making it down to the end yet, but it did it, it sort of going. Next thing to think about is going to be getting, getting the bricks down to the um, to the drills, I think. So I've done a little bit by hand to just get things started, because I want to have a um, an initial drill. And so there we go. There's my first electric drill, and of all places, I put it on the stone. That's a... Uh, so it seems like a slightly odd place to put it, but no, I think it's it's the right place because um, it, it's where I needed to expand first. So what I'm going to do here is split off the stone to go two ways. One off to go off to the furnaces to be made into bricks, and then the other one to go off just straight onto the belt because uh, there's some of the products down here are going to need st uh, raw stone as well as um, as well as stone bricks. So we can pass that down here onto the main bus like that. And now once that kicks off, I've put some coal in it manually, so it will now start cooking the um, cooking the stone and there we go run a cable up and the, and the, and the mining drill starts mm -hmm. running happily I mean this obviously isn't going to be enough for the sort of levels of um, everything that we're going to need but it's a good starting point we now do actually have bricks on the bus so we've got that 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 is now is, is running we're just gonna need some more um, furnaces I think to start because even if there isn't even if there isn't enough stone now to use to, to keep more than one furnace busy there is going to be soon and with the stone, we also want to start start being able to build walls, so I'll research that. And that's going to be something we'll need to keep the biters away, so it's going to be a fairly pressing um, product, I think. We'll need to get them up and running quite soon. But in the meantime, there's a few other things to faff around with. Like for keeping the bus finished and up to, and, uh, up to date. There we go, that's my um, four, current four, four products that are, that are bus worthy. And now it's time to start building assembly machines on the bus, I think. And that's another... It's, in fact, it's very, very similar to the um, to building the drills. It's, it's exactly the same sort of process in that we're building up the, the, the motors at the bottom, linking the um, the gears and motors onto the same belt like that, and um, and then building up the basic burner version and passing it into the, the assembly machine to make the good version. And I'm, yeah, definitely ready to move away from um, <laughs> burners and stuff as soon as I can. Now here, I'm also going to need lots of the uh, long inserters because with, with the passing things across the belts like this, you, you basically have to use long inserters or funny shenanigans with splitters, which is a bit of a faff. And let's just get all this sort of lined up and in, in the right places. And this is complicated. It took me a couple of tries to get this right because of my sort of I don't know brain farts and so on. But that's that now should work. Chuck some coal in there and um, and it'll start building me the. Come on, put some coal in there. I want to see the long inserters being made. <laughs> and again, lock off the um, the chest so it doesn't make too many of them. Now, of course, the in theory, it's, it's nice and easy to, to line all these things up. But there's always something that takes the odd funny input here and there. Uh, like this one also requires bricks, for example, or, or stone. I'm not quite sure which. So there's a lot of a lot of different products going into the top there. But I think that's now probably just about it. Let's get some power set up for everything. Link it across. And then we can feed the iron in. And don't forget the copper, Lawrence. It's not going to work until you put copper in as well. <laughs> and make sure everything's powered. Nope, I've got distracted. We'll come back to that, I'm sure. Okay, so next thing to think about is the um, is improving the improving the the resource gathering. So rather than having the miners feeding directly into the furnaces and producing the the um, metals that way, it's a lot more effective and a lot more future-proof because you can bring ore in from multiple places. If you have a, sing a single sort of smelting site like this, and then run a belt it belts in with the uh, the resource 
and then run them out with the, with the uh, product as well like that. So now we need to get some um, iron ore coming down there. So we've got the um, from the mine up the, from the ore area up here. Yeah, we'll just rip anything else up that's in the way because the um, the new mining drills are the basically the top priority at the moment. So we want to feed those down here. And as usual, I'm putting the uh, putting ha ha putting the um, the ore onto one side of the belt, and then we're going to have the coal on the other side of the belt. And we'll put some new coal mines up here, like this. When I decide where to put it, there we go. And now, because that's partly on the iron and partly on the coal, we need to have a splitter in here to, d to split it out. So we'll make sure all of just the iron comes down this way, and the uh, coal goes across the top one. And we've also got some co some copper coming through on this um, iron belt, which is again the same same sort of problem. With the starting point, all the resource patches are very very close together. Which I mean, really, that's that's a nice thing because it means a lot less running around to trying to trying to get things at the start of the game. But it does mean that you get these sort of it pulls the ores out together and they overlap, and you get and you need to put in these sorters and make sure you've got somewhere to so, something to do with the um, the ores you don't want to you don't want to be actually feeding in there because I don't want to end up with copper on my iron bus. And so yeah, this this is all this is all fine. I can now um, start loading up all of the um, machines over here with coal, so they'll start running. And put in a bit of coal by hand into those furnaces because I've only got one um, one one electric miner pulling up the uh, coal at the moment, and that's not remotely enough. <laughs> it, it's starting point, yes, but it's and it lets me make sure I've got all the belts going the right way. But it's not going to be enough coal for this system. So we'll need to get some more miners. There we go. That's another one. We can get rid of some of the, now. Now it's time to get rid of the um, all the old burner miners as well. We don't need those in this. It's the uh, 21st century. We've got electricity. And once again, I can of course recycle them back into the um, in, into the mine, uh, electric miner production facilities. So then, yeah, they're not wasted. Now we just need to decide where we want to put these nice shiny new miners. There. Yeah, we do, we do need quite a lot more stone, I think. Those bricks... The, actually, the bricks are backing up slightly, so we're not doing too badly. I think they were. I can't, can't tell. Keep the research going um, for now. I think we're going to need more iron than this, though. As, as usual, iron is always, iron is the limiting factor. And I think generally in in um, Factorio, for quite iron tends to be the limiting factor for quite a long time. Eventually, it becomes copper when you start making huge quantities of electronic circuits. Oh, finally, no stuff. I got the uh, copper feed for that that machine. <laughs> yeah, once you start making massive quantities of electronic circuits, and especially the blue circuits going all the way up to that sort of tier, then you start to need enormous quantities of copper. But early on, it's always iron that's the other uh, one's in heavy demand. So here we go. Um, I think this should work. Yes, there we go. Um, Electric assembly machines are now being made. Fantastic. Let's have steel axe. Steel axe is great because um, it allows you to mine things much more quickly. And yes, it allows you to mine things off the ground more quickly, which is, yes, I'm sure that's vaguely useful. But more importantly, it allows you to pick up belts and buildings and things that you're demolishing much more quickly. So that's very, very useful because of that. And now we should also feed up the, um, the coal to the uh, furnaces up top for the, for the stone bricks. And it's nice being able to just run a belt up there and like that, and, and not have to worry about it too much. Uh, grab some, and just, just yeah, just keep things running nicely like that. You also want to have, um, I think, an automated feed into the uh, into into the generator down here, just to make sure that doesn't run out. And what we're going to do is put in a uh, splitter and then set the priority so that the um, the generators have first priority for the coal, and then it only it only gets passed on to the furnaces afterwards. Because if you if we run out of electricity, we're in trouble. Uh, we won't even be able to put the coal into the into the furnaces if that happens. I should probably use burner inserters for that. Actually, maybe I'll go and grab some in a bit. The reason I put the belt across the top instead of into the side, as was my first sort of instinct, is because that means there's room now to put in more generators underneath and probably above it as well if I need a bit more uh, a bit more oomph in my electric electrical supplies. I don't yet, I don't think. It's, uh, things seem to be running quite well. I should probably check that. Uh, but I'm sure in the future, as, the, as it gets a bit more um, demanding, then I'll, need, I'll start to need a lot more uh, electricity generation. So, you know, trying to plan ahead a little bit. Right, now we're pulling out all of the old um, cop uh, iron mines that we're using the old um, burner, burner miners because they're just terrible. These are much faster and much less hassle to keep them powered. Because they obviously because they use electricity, Let's run some cables around like that. Um, could do with a few more of those, to be honest. Oh yes, and there's also um, 
now 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 the um, the miners overlaps coal patches a little bit, so we need an additional um, check there to make sure there isn't any coal wax in being pulled through, or rather if there is, to feed it off to the um, to the furnaces so it gets used for that instead. Now what I have done down there is again I prioritised it so that the pri so the input the, prior imp the input with priority is the one from the iron mine for the coal splitter, and that's because I'd, I, it has less room to back up, and I want to just I just want to make sure that any coal that does come down there gets used up as quickly as possible. And gets passed on into the um, into the furnaces. Okay, we've got a little bit more iron coming through. It's not doing brilliantly, but it's sort of basically okay. I'm going to need a lot of uh, furnaces in order to expand this bit out, though. So it's time to start automating production of those. I don't want to end up building all of those in my pockets. That's far too slow. So now we've got now it can grab the uh, the bricks as they come down there and turn them into furnaces. And we can start thinking about furnaces. For, we can start thinking about having an, a, a smelting area for the copper as well. Let's so put in a, a row of those. I think nine is the uh, the right number for um, a yellow belt, so or well, for half a yellow belt rather, because you've got you've on, on, you've got on one side of the yellow belt you've got um, the coal, on the other side you've got the ore. And I think for half a half a yellow belt's worth, nine stone furnaces is conveniently the right number for um, uh, to, to use it all up as it, at the rate it, come, it can come in at. Uh, we'll find out about that later, but uh, as you can see the coal, the, the, no, the other one, the iron one has backed up a little. Well, now she's not actually backing up, but then it's not a full belt coming in. But they are all in use, so it's it's it's, it's about balanced at the moment. Okay, we need to split off the coal, of course. And join that on there. So now that's the uh, the sort of sort of system I was talking about. We've got now got the same sort of system for the iron and the, and the copper. I just need to move the miners across. And make the... Um, coal miners a little bit more space efficient. So this is the thing about early on in the game, your patches tend to be quite small, so you need to pack in your um, your miners quite quite closely and try and be reasonably efficient with the space. Later on, when you've got a bit more space to play with and the patches get a bit bigger, like that, that, that copper patch is huge, but the iron one typically isn't. Um, despite the fact I need a lot more iron at this stage. Uh, yeah, later on, once you're starting to use patches further away and bring stuff in by train, you don't need to worry about it quite as much. You can just slap them down and willy-nilly. But at this stage, you need to think about it a bit more and be a little, little bit more careful and just try and get a full full coverage. As always, need more iron. <laughs> Let's put in some more miners. And the copper miners are st well; they're still burner ones. So I need to keep an eye on them and keep them fueled. But the copper one, since the copper ones are keeping up, it's not too much of a worry. I'd rather concentrate on making the iron ones faster. Because that's where all the resources, that's where um, where my bottlenecks are at the moment. I'm using a lot of iron and not a huge amount of copper. So, so yeah, the, co the copper is currently fine. Ah, this is what now I'm um, replacing all the assembly machines with the uh, electric ones because, as we've said, those are much much better uh, because they don't need to be they don't need to be fueled. I don't think they're actually faster. I think they run at the same rate, but they don't stop running because you've forgotten to put coal in them. So that's obviously much nicer. <laughs> I didn't quite have enough though, so I'm just uh, yeah. Here we go. That might be it. Is that enough? Yes, there we go. Now I've finished off. They're all all electric assembly machines now. You don't get the nice glow from the electric ones though. So there's no. So over there it's got got a bit dark because it's night time. I guess what I'll have to do is um, put some lights in. Okay, and also I'm going to build some walls because at some point I'm going to want to have some sort of defen effective defence against the biters. <laughs> so I mean that's maybe some way off. I. I the biters aren't being that difficult yet, but I am definitely going to want to put some walls around the base and keep and just to keep them away. So they're going to become a problem fairly soon, I think. Okay, what are we building next? Ah, yes, research. So it's time to time to move the research away from the uh, burner into burner systems for the usual reasons. Um, here we go, putting putting both of the resources onto the same belt just because it makes it a bit easier. There's only only you need one belt to go up that way then. And the research isn't that it's not that resource hungry when you compare it to the speed of a belt, so I don't need to have two of them feeding up it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look into um, electric labs though, because that's about the only thing that's um, currently currently still a burner system. And I could always run a, a a belt of coal along the bus and then run it up the side there and feed the feed coal in from the other side. That would work. Um, I don't know. I'll have to have a look and see how much research is required to find to get the electric um, research labs. Because once I've got that, then obviously I don't need it. But um, for the time being, it it might be worth having. It might be worth having. We'll see. We'll see. I'll I'll decide that in the next episode. 
now. I want to, I want to slightly increase my research speed at the moment. I think so. I'll, we'll go for we'll go for four of them at the moment. Uh, four, I think. And it seems that having about one assembly machine, per, well, one red circuit, red science assembly machine per uh, research lab is is about right at the moment. So we'll uh, we'll leave it like that. And uh, wire everything up, of course. And that should be okay. The uh, cogs are being produced much faster. Um, and I so that seems to be, yeah, having two 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 uh, research pack machines running off one cog machine is, is basically okay. Now I noticed this backed up, which is a bit silly because um, I didn't. It was because it was all going in on um, all the coal was appearing on one side of the belt. It's being used from the other side of the belt by the um, as, as a preference by by the way because of the way the belts join. So now I'm putting in the standard belt balancer here, and then I'm, and then then putting in the uh, the link up there. So that should sort that out. Let's have some radar as well. Radar's nice. It lets me find out what's going on around my base. <laughs> At the moment I can't really tell. Let's have some more uh, furnaces as well because there seems to be a uh, backlog of the um, of the iron ore. Uh, and you know, we we need we always need more iron. We still haven't got up to a full belt of it. Uh, in fact, we're never going to get up to a full belt of it because we've only got half a belt of iron ore going in. I'm going to need to build another of those smelting arrays in order to get that but at the moment it's probably enough it's it's capable of dealing with all of the iron ore that's coming out of the mine anyway so i'm not going to need any more until i actually build a another mine okay next up is copper so let's have a nice big copper mine uh, because there's just so much copper available running the power of course And there's quite a lot of iron and a bit of coal coming out of this, so, what I, so I'm just going to feed it into the same sorting system. And that um, that sort that filter is capable, no splitter is capable of dealing with two input belts at the same time, as long as you don't have sort of more than one belts worth of either of the outputs. So that's that's going to be fine. It's going to feed enough copper down to keep me in with plenty of copper, and it's going to add a little bit more iron to it as well, and a little bit of coal because there seems to be some coal somewhere in that copper patch. It's just a bit of a mess up there. Looking forward, kind of looking forward to going over and um, building a big iron mine on the uh, for the um, uh, in the area that I that I took out the biting nest earlier. Yes, up there, uh, because that'll that'll allow me to um, have a just basically a big pure iron mine up there. That's going that's going to be a job for the next episode, of course. Um, we'll try and get something in up there, and also building a wall around the edge is going to be a job for the next episode. I think we're going to need to uh, do some have something going across the top and probably around the iron patch in order to keep the biters out from there. Um, and then we're going to have to start thinking about turrets as well, and and feeding them, or feeding all of them, with which is going to mean uh, more belts and more iron, turning it up, turning it all into ammunition. That's going to be quite a big job. Still, that's going to give me a few episodes worth of stuff to do. I hope you'll come along and join me for that. I think this has been a, a reasonable start to the um, to, to the, to the uh, playthrough. Uh, again, as as I said, I'm doing the um, the format slightly differently. Let me know what you think, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Thank you.